Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Hello, welcome. So today I'm here with the Syasa Public Library's Turn the Page podcast. My name is Sharon Long and I am the Teen Services Librarian here. And today I have two very special guests with us. Hi, I'm Kristen Howell and I am currently the choral, one of the choral directors at Syasa High School and the director of the Adelettes. I'm also a former um, member of the Adelettes. Um, I graduated from Syosa High School in 1989, and Lindsay was my teacher and my mentor, and is still my mentor and mom, and, like figure and friend, and oh, just inspiration. Sister, sister like figure. <laughs> I'm Lindsay Bordney, and I founded the Adelettes, and I met Kristen as a seventh grader, and she made me look good all these years. She was my accompanist. And she was uh, an outstanding baritone section leader and president. And uh, she's um, made it possible for the Adelettes to continue because when I retired, it would have died with me had not Kristen been able to uh, keep it going and improve and improve upon it. So I love her. You know, I was always wondering, you know, sort of how the transition went once you, you know, we're looking to retire and everything with, you know, this wonderful group that you had built over the years. I wanted to ask Kristen and both of you to sort of like explain how that transition came together because I just, full disclosure to our listening audience, um, I also was a member of the Adelettes and graduated from Syosset High School and, um, and Ms. Bortney was my musical director and I absolutely adored the entire experience. I had some of the best of my memories in high school were with the Adelettes. So this is a very Adelette centric, fantastic, uh, you know, time to bring up memories. But the, the transition was something that, you know, I kind of, I was worried. I was like, when Ms. Bortney, you know, retires, what's going to happen? So just some well, I was about worried that. too. And I did a lot of begging. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, we talked a lot and, and Kristen was at this point ready to, um, to make a change. I think, but Kristen, you have to speak for yourself. Yeah, it, this is a great story, actually. I tell it often, and um, and it was probably one of the better choices I've made in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but Lindy and I have always stayed in touch. Um, as soon as I graduated high school, we stayed in touch, and I was in graduate school at the University of Illinois, and I called her, and I said, I'm doing a research project, and I'm gonna use barbershop music, and, and how does it help students stay focused and so of course she helped me and we pulled all of the adolescents and we had a whole um, research project going and she helped me with that and then I, I uh, graduated and I got my first job in North Carolina so my husband's from North Carolina I taught in Durham for one year and realized that I, I was just too homesick I had to come back to New York it was yeah, it was horrible um, I couldn't believe I was actually homesick but I was so my sweet husband said you have to be in New York. You have to teach in New York. That's where your heart is. So I was really fortunate. I did get a job um, immediately in Massapequa. Wonderful, wonderful place. Fabulous job. I ended up being the high school choral director there for five years. Um, it was unbelievable. Wonderful experience. Miss Bortney came to one of my concerts. She it was so nice seeing her in the audience. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had I had a baby, and mm -hmm. I um, and I realized that. Ms. Bortney was saying, you know, I'm going to retire next year. Do you think maybe you would consider coming over to Syosset from Massapequa? It's a very similar, you know, situation in terms of what you'd be teaching. Um, it'd be a lot closer to your home. And at that point, I did have a baby. And I really thought about it. It was a tough, tough choice because I, I had really strong ties with the students in Massapequa. It was so, so wonderful. But I realized the move, the best move for me was to move. and. Um, and she said, I have to keep the Adelettes going. And I said, absolutely. <laughs> and that was it. 
the rest is history and the Adelettes have been thriving ever since then. And Lindy's been a part of the ro the role, the ride the entire time. You know, she's come, she's worked with the girls. We've done several nights of barbershop um, over the past 21 years where she's been a clinician. Uh, we've been to Vermont twice. We've been singing with her current group. Uh, all of the girls know her. Every year they know her. Um, it's, it's just been such an easy, transition and I love telling that story because I feel I feel like it was meant to happen and just knowing that Lindy what she started that I can continue to to hopefully do what she did I, I'll never be her I can't I mean she's the best she is the queen of barbershop yes. as far as I'm concerned <laughs> and you know my goal is to is to try and and, and get there and I'm still trying and, but she's my inspiration. So it was, it was the right choice. Oh, that's amazing. And so I wanted also to talk about um, the origins of the Adelettes and how the group, you know, started because barbershop music, I mean, how unique is barbershop music to, you know, Long Island high school, you know, choral experiences. I, I really like always kind of wondered that, like how unique was being in the Adelette. So it felt very unique. It felt like something that, you know, maybe I, I didn't see elsewhere. So I wanted to hear about that whole origin. Yeah, I can give you a long, a long story. My first job was in Garden City, where the assistant principal was singing with a men's barbershop group. And so as part of the interview, he said, would you start a men's, a, a boys barbershop? And so I did that for five years. And then I came to Syosset. And part of the reason I got the job was because the su superintendent, assistant superintendent, uh, Dr. Schwartz, his wife belonged to Island Hills Chorus, and they had just won international in 1978. And, and so she was going to feed me all the music. And he says, you have barbershop here. Do it for the girls. My wife will give you all the music. Start a group. And so he was the inspiration, but, uh, well, the force behind that decision. And I never looked back. So that's how we, we got it started. And then I realized I went to an all Eastern conference and I met Joe Lyles, who was kind of like the godfather of barbershop. And he was giving a, a demonstration lecture. And he says, and I'm sitting in the front because otherwise I fall asleep. So I was sitting in the front and he says, and how many of you sing barbershop with your students? And I'm raising my hand and nobody behind me had their hand up, you know? And so Joe became my mentor. I guess we all need mentors. And he came with us to NISMA uh, to be sure that I was um, doing, it, doing it right. And uh, so, we, so that's really how he started. And then I went on a crusade, my own personal crusade, is I'm going to get barbershop it like a chicken in every pot. I wanted barbershop in every chorus room because I found out that by singing barbershop, it improved all of our singing, our, our um, classical music, because you have to have the intonation, you have to blend, you have to have your vowels matching, you have to really, really listen. And it improved all of our singing by coming through barbershop. So it became the, the most important to me. Um, vehicle for honoring the the young women who were really talented and and were wanting that extra creative um, um, uh, energy to, to put someplace you know it's like uh, you have your regular courses and they're great but there are certain kids who just need a little bit more and they can't get that more in the regular classroom and so this was it's highly auditioned and it's for those kids who want to go the extra mile because they really are passionate about their music. And I got to say a word about Sharon, too, because we all know Kristen's value. But Sharon was one of my most favorite um, people in the universe. <laughs> and beautiful singer. And she sang, I will never forget, simple songs from, from uh, the Bernstein Mass. Um, and she got a 98 and I could have killed the judge. Because... <laughs> I still remember this guy. I, was, I can't I'm believe still, you remember that. That's wild. <laughs> I am so angry because Sharon was, the, she has this beautiful, beautiful instrument. And she went on to be representing Sweet Adeline's The Mother, the Mothership, um, chose six <laughs> um, young women from various high schools in the country to form a, a, a Young Women in Harmony board. And Sharon was on that board 
uh, oh, wow. representing the whole East Eastern yeah. Coast. And so, she, and she made decisions and shared information. And um, she, so she was our representative. So Sharon is not just another pretty face also. <laughs> She, she is very, very special to this, Aww. and she kept it going, too. So that's, did I answer your question? <laughs> I, think so. I want to talk about what you just mentioned, but um, that was a wild experience because I, we, got, we went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and my mom came with, and my parents, God bless, they, they come to everything. They've been to every concert I've ever been in, and we have tapes that probably no one else has of, of these different um, experiences. Which Her father awesome. will have them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, you know, so the whole thing about um, with the Sweet Ad Adelines International, um, we spent the, like a day workshopping uh, and just like talking about the types of music, um, you know, what what they should be adding to, you know, the the repertoire of, you know, what they're um, arranging. And, you know, these were girls from all over the country and we went out to dinner together. It was just such like a wonderful experience. And I'm, I'm still so very grateful that you nominated me for that experience because it was just unbelievable. But um, yeah, so as far as, you know, uh, the adolets and travel and experiences go, that was something so unique and so amazing. So I know, I can tell you where we went to when I was in the group, but I know um, I wanted to ask specifically, you know, Ms. Courtney, like what were some of the most memorable um, trips and uh, experiences? And then I will ask Kristen the same because I don't know like what they've been up to in the past, you know, <laughs> 20 years. So, yeah, no, I wrote down some, some things that we did. Uh, we went to uh, Nashville. I mean, uh, one of the highlights was we went to Nashville and we sang for the national MENC. You have the state things, you have the all Eastern, and then you have the national. So to be invited to give a workshop demonstration for national MENC was really quite exceptional. So we did that. And we also introduced the Young Women in Harmony program to, to Sweet Adeline's um, in San Antonio at the Riverwalk Hotel. I mean, it was wonderful. And we gave a whole program with Ramapo Valley, who were the former international champions of the Sweet Adelines in their competition. So to be on that stage with 3,000 women watching and as young, young people, because they're used to old people <laughs> singing barbershop, and to see young people so enthusiastic and doing so beautifully, uh, it, was, it was thrilling. So those are some things. And uh, another thing that, that I was remembering is music in the parks. We used to go to those every year or every other year. Um, where they would have contests and we would score very high. And one year we got the result that we were number one in the whole country they, of, of the highest scoring choral group that they had done in all of their music in the park things. So that was really an honor that was quite thrilling to receive. And then we did local, there was a show called In a Minute. I don't know if it's still on local TV. We brought a quartet on because he was, uh, the man who was interviewing us wanted to show that there were teenagers who were doing good things as opposed to saying what, what, what the bad things were the kids were doing. Uh, he wanted to show the opposite. And he used us as an example of kids who were really loving what they were doing and, and getting it out there to the public. So those are some things that I wrote down, but let's get back to Kristen to see what she's been doing. So after Lindy retired, um, thank goodness she stayed local because I did call her all the time and she helped me tremendously just keep things going at the level that she was at. And that's a, those are tough shoes to fill. Those are really tough shoes to fill. And I, I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. <laughs> so she really helped me. She would come to rehearsals. She would say, okay, this is where the blend needs to be different. You need to move, the, you know, the two sides aren't matching. So we need to adjust. We need to figure out, you know, who's gonna stand where and let's match their voices. She would, um, she would come and help me pick the group. I mean, pretty much every year I would beg, plead, and borrow as long as I could um, to get her here. And she would help me and I would have all these girls in the room and then we would spend about three hours and we would have them each sing separately together, this formation, that formation, these two girls, whatnot. And that was just, it was 
mind boggling at the different sounds that would happen by simply moving people around. So like even a very simple move, but she has the ears for that. She knows. So I, always was so super grateful that she would come and help with that and still be you know be part of this but since um since she retired and moved to vermont and she's no longer local um i call her and facetime her anyway <laughs> i've taken the group i've taken the group really um we've been fortunate the school's been supportive in traveling i did have the honor to go to all state new york all state um in Rochester in 2008, we had a concert hour where the Adelettes were featured. It was great. We sang for about 40 minutes and the program was, was just chock filled with, you know, wonderful standard music and then some fun, different kinds of barbershop music, some Joe jo Lyles arrangements. Um, he's an incredible arranger. I love him. Um, I've taken the group to Vermont twice to sing with Lindy's group. It's called Made in Vermont and her group's fantastic. And they put on these incredible, incredible shows and, and they're featuring wonderful musicians. Um, last year, we were lucky enough to go. Was it, was it last year? No, I guess it was 2018. Yeah, we were there yeah. with Round, Round Midnight, which is an unbelievable male quartet. They're just fantastic and they were the you know the, the stars of the show and then we got to to sing a couple of numbers and then we sang with lindy's group and we did the big finale and and the girls just they can't stop talking about it mm -hmm. they got more out of those experiences i mean of course i've taken them to disney world many times i've taken them to universal studios many 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 times and those are fun times and bonding times and a lot of you know uh, social interaction it's just wonderful but these musical experiences where we're just really learning are what they remember and i am so lucky that i was able to take these these young women to these places um i think vermont is is the most special they all want to come back every single year can we go back to vermont they don't want to go back to disney world they want to go back to vermont and we were supposed to come this year because we go every two years is really what it was because we went in 2016 as well and um and so we were scheduled to come until you know the national the international pandemic struck you know and that stopped everything but the girls are, are begging you know when can we go back to vermont we want to work with lindy we want to work with her group some of the members of lindy's group keep in touch with the girls via facebook they, they became friends it, it's just across you know generations that this is happening and it's really wonderful it's 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 been it's been exciting. It's been exciting because it means that barbershop music is alive and kids want to be part of this. They want to feel this special um, feeling when they're challenging themselves to sing. This music is difficult. I mean, this is, I can't even, oh my goodness. I was listening to some of the recordings that Lindy had sent. They are way difficult and and we were singing this music in in the seventh grade in the eighth grade i can't even imagine what i just i don't know how she pulled it off i just i don't know how she pulled it off but um the quality is beyond anything you could could want could could hear now you just couldn't what what you were able to do lindy is is un, it's it's really it's it marks you know it's such a high level that it just gives us all a good a standard that we strive to be at. And that's where we're, we're, we're doing now. Um, you know, my girls listen to these, I play recordings for them all the time. And, you know, the goal is to, is to get the blend correctly, to get all of the vowels aligned, to have everything just so. Now keep in mind, we are rehearsing 12 feet apart with masks on. I was right? gonna ask about that, how, how this has changed, you know, how you're doing everything. So it's been challenging, but you know, we are fortunate. We are in person. We have the chance to see each other and we are so, we know how, how lucky we are. We are appreciative. All the girls are appreciative. I have girls that don't come to school. They're all virtual. They, they learn from home, yet they come back on Monday nights and they rehearse with me because that's what matters to them. And I think that that the fact that we're able to provide that, and yes, singing in masks 12 feet apart is no fun for anyone. It's just not. Um, getting a blend is tough. You know, mm -hmm. trying to teach choreography is, is a challenge. We did it. You know, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you rehearse? 
What yeah, type of building? We rehearse in the auditorium. Oh. So there, I mean, the entire auditorium is filled with, you know, I wow. tried to make it like a three to four part uh, lines, you know, like riser positions, and I have all the basses in the center, and then, you know, the leads and the baritones and the tenors on the end, just like I would do with a riser position. So everything I can do to simulate what is normal, but mm -hmm. it, it's not, but yet they're still excited about being there. And they're mm -hmm. still excited about the challenge. We want music, Ms. Howell, that's really tough. Mm -hmm. One of the students said to me yesterday, and it was so cool to hear this, a senior, and she said, Ms. Howell, I just want you to know when I was in the eighth grade that my goal was Adelettes. That was my goal. <laughs> I and that. I said, wow, that is amazing. <laughs> that was it though? That was the goal? She goes, that was it. Because, yeah, I wanted to be in Chamber Singers with you. I wanted all that, but I, Adelette's was the focus. That was the goal. And she said, how can we make everyone aware of this? And she was so excited about sharing, you know, with other young people who, who maybe don't know about barbershop music. And you were asking earlier, you know, how popular is barbershop music? It's not super popular in the high schools. Not many people do it simply because it's so difficult. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot more challenging than your typical choral rep. It's a cappella, you know, and, and it's, it's a lot of dominant seven chords. It's tough. It's really tough. And they have to know a lot about music theory to understand where they lie in the chord and who should be louder and who should, you know, who has the root and this and that. And so it's a really nice teaching opportunity for students. And when they graduate, they know this and it helps them move on in their musical career wherever that may take them and they always know what they can do so um so the you know i've always you know been a little bit curious about why is this type of music called barbershop music uh if you could explain for you know some of the listeners who might not know oh boy we're gonna have to read the handbook on this i i could tell you the the, the typical answer would be that in a barbershop they'd start singing and it was all ear singing. That it was not written down originally. Someone knew the melody. They knew in their heads what the chords were. And then they started harmonizing by ear. And it wasn't until 1945, 1947, that they started writing these arrangements down so that more people could sing them. But there's a whole history of barbershop. And I would direct your listeners to find out because I'm afraid that uh, I'm not gonna give you all the, all the correct dates and people. Uh, but it, it started uh, with the men in the 1940s, and then the women caught on. They wanted it too. And now it's grown to maybe 33,000 women in Sweet Adelines in maybe eight countries. Again, my numbers could be off by one or two. But um, the thing about barbershop is that it, because of the music man, people learned about barbershop, but they learned in not necessarily a positive way because they see people in straw hats singing old fashioned music. And that's not what it is today. Today's barbershop has taken the same chord structures and, and vocabulary, but applied it to music of today so that more and more younger people are able to really relate to it, as well as some of the old standards. It uses basically the American songbook, Songs of the 40s, but there are, are wonderful arrangements now of uh, popular groups that we're doing. Kristen, what are some of the ones that, that we've done together? Sing? We, we did Can't Stop the Feeling. Mm -hmm. um, Rise Again. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. There's one Sing. Who, they, who's... I don't think we ever did that one together, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, we've done all of the Valentine's Day music is, is, I mean, we have our standard Valentine's Day music, you know, our heart of my heart for the boys and shaboom for the girls, Sharon, I'm sure you know that and mm -hmm. eyes of love and, and all of that. But now I have students arranging their own music in barbershop yeah. style for, we do a Valentine's day, you know, uh, singing telegram day. And it's one of the, um, it's one of the highlights of the year. And Lindy started that. Is this a tradition that you've continued and um, curious how that whole thing came about as well? Well, the, I, I read about it, that the men were doing this type of thing. Um, and so I said, maybe we could do this in the school. Let's, let's try it. And so we got together 
and we um, and we decided how we would do it. And we, we got everybody's schedules when they were free, when they thought that they could um, be available. And I made quartets for period one, period two, period three, like that. But then the hardest thing was getting permission from the teachers to allow us to come in and disrupt their class for five minutes. You know, I mean, some people, their classes were, were sacred. And I mean, I'm, I'm putting a rather nasty, I don't mean to be a nasty slant, but it, it was an invasion of their space. And some teachers welcomed it and said that it was the best day of the year because people were nice to each other. Um, which was usually the case, except for those who bought Valentines for their friends who were in the cafeteria to embarrass them. So there were those types of Valentines too. But primarily, it was a day of love. It was the kids would go around, they'd, they'd have roses that Triem uh, would give them uh, to sell for $3. So they could have a singing telegram for $3 or for $5, you get the song with the rose. And, and you'd hear these little quartets running all over the school all day into classrooms, into the cafeteria, into the courtyard, singing and surrounding people and sharing the music and the joy. And it was wonderful. It was just as I look forward to it every year. And so Kristen, you can tell me how it's going now. It is super. One of the highlights of the year for sure for both groups. We now have a, me a men's group at Syosset High School. Um, when, um, when I started there, the Adelettes was so popular and so many girls wanted to be in it. The boys started to feel left out and they said, why can't we have a group? And I said, no, I think we can. So um, we were able to make it happen. And now we have a, a male group and a female group. And on Valentine's Day, it is their, uh, it is their day. It is their Super Bowl. And they spend, just like Lindy described, the entire day spreading love and joy through their music. And they sell, I want to say, close to 350 telegrams per year. Wow. That's a lot to deliver. And it is completely student run in terms of selling, um, selling them. We do uh, telegrams over the phone. So we get a lot of teachers who want to buy telegrams for their loved ones and we call them. Now we can do FaceTime. So if they can't be with us, we would FaceTime them. Um, we would poll every teacher in the building and make sure it was okay to come into their classrooms. Um, now, what I've started doing is I, um, whenever anyone purchases a telegram, they sign a waiver saying that their intentions are good and they're abiding by the school policy and the code of conduct that they're selling, they're providing the singing telegram in a really, really good way. So we don't have those problems, thank goodness, of people making fun of other people, that's gone. Thank goodness it's gone and it's and never coming back because everybody's in it for the right reasons. The teachers, I would say on the whole, really love it. Yes, sometimes it's difficult to, um, to go into some classrooms because teachers are teaching and that's their time and we get that. So we respect that and we send them love through the air. But everybody else, we go into their classrooms and they are so excited when the knock comes on the door. Everybody gets all excited. One year I followed them around with a video camera and I, and I was able to capture how the reaction uh, was felt among the receiving the telegram and then all of the students around. It was so fun to watch their face and for them to feel special for that, you know, two minutes or three minutes. And, and they got to the point now where they, they took the person, they said, do you feel comfortable sitting in this chair in front of the room? And the person usually says, yes, I would love to sit. And they surrounded the person and they sang to that person. And it was so nice. And it was just such a wonderful way to share a moment of, of kindness and of mm -hmm. love. Yeah. And, and that's what we're doing because that's the goal is let's yeah. share this through this, this music. Um, I was talking earlier about some of the, the selections. I use all of Lindy's selections that she handed down to me and she handed down to me wonderful music that I still have all of her handwriting on all of her folders everything and I use it every day um, and now we have more music that students have created they've arranged 
you know, popular pieces. We've got a, a version of um, I've Had the Time of My Life from Dirty Dancing that we use for, for a singing telegram. We actually have a Lady Gaga version of Bad Romance that oh, the kids wow. love to sing. Um, we have just we probably have about 12, 13 pieces now, and they're continuing to do it. I have students writing now because they want to. They're so excited. They want to learn how to arrange music now. So in addition to singing it, teaching it, they're arranging it. And, and that's kind of exciting because they can hear their own arrangements sung in a live situation. Now this year, it's going to be a little challenging because with the, uh, with the regulations, I'm not really sure we can actually do our norm and go into the classroom so we're trying to be, get creative and um, we might be sending a lot of emails with videos which is fine and uh, we might be calling a lot of people um, and using a facetime kind of a thing and the students will be 12 feet apart and they'll sing and they'll sing that way and that'll be great but um, actually one year, it was so popular that Fox News came to Syosset High School and they interviewed us for these singing telegrams. And I had all the girls in their sweatshirts. Um, that year it was big heart on it. It said, I love Syosset High School Adelettes. And, and they wore them and we gave one to the news anchor who was there and we all sang to her and it was so fun. And they put it on the news because it's something so different and not many schools really have that, but thanks to Lindy, Sias, it does. Oh, That's thank great. you. And we did have boys do it too. I just want to oh. say, yeah, yeah, we did, but it wasn't as organized as, as yours. You have a regular voice chorus type of thing. I mean, that, that meet regularly. I was lucky if I could get four or eight. And, and so I had at least a quartet going around. I, I had one quartet called the, the, the seldom, the almost four. Or the, no, the sometimes, the sometimes four, because I, to have four of them in the same room at the same time, it's like, like chase, herding cats. So, but we did at least have one boys group and sometimes more than, than one boy quartet. So that's good. Oh, and I want to share, uh, we had a story too. Um, my women do this, uh, but they're, they're not in a school. Uh, we just, we drive around to, to various places. And we were um, in, a, in, a, in a place where it was headquarters and, and it was a snowy day. And so they had parked on the street where they shouldn't have because there was no other place to park. You know, the snow was in the, in the regular parking places. So we get this knock on the door and this officer, this very large officer says, you're gonna have to move your cars. And if you don't move them in, in, three, in three minutes, you know, we're going to ticket you all. And I said, officer, come on in and see what we're doing. And I brought him in and we surrounded him. He was really tall too. His name was Officer Merkel. And he, um, and he stood there and we surrounded him and we sang to him and he got misty. And he said, oh my God, could, could you sing for my wife? Aww. So, Aww. So you we did it in the best way. And, you know, they got tickets and he just, she said, take your time. But if you could eventually get your cars because they're not in a safe place. P.S. One of my women is on, on a high a route number seven, going way over the speed limit. And um, she gets pulled over by Officer Merkel. And so she <laughs> says to him, this is another day, you know, like, like, like a couple of months, maybe a month later. And she says, Officer Merkel, you were in my house and we sang to you. And he said, oh, are you part of Made in Vermont? And she said, yes, I am. And he said, well, here's a warning. <laughs> <laughs> so she got out of the ticket. So it's, it's, it's really been a wonderful thing that we've done. So that, that's the story. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I remember now the male group that was the counterpart when I was, um, you know, in high school had a really kind of um, goofy name. I don't know if they gave it to themselves or if that was something you dubbed them, but they were called, it was the testosterone tones. Do you yes, remember it was. that? <laughs> yes. He, Scott was trying to get me fired. Yeah. He, I said, you can, we can't do that. He said, yeah, yeah, you can. Testosterone tones. And it is, you trip on that one a lot. But yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That, Scott Chesson, that was his creation. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. That was a good, there was like two years, um, I remember, where they would, you know, come along and the vests, they would wear their vests and they would do oh, their yeah. little bit as, yeah. They yeah. were great too. That was when Brian was a freshman and Scott was a senior. 
So I want to just back up for a quick second. Um, so the project that um, you're referring to with the White, Qu the White Christmas project, um, this was um, sort of what brought this whole uh, idea together. And um, so I really, I want to hear um, from, um, from Kristen the whole idea for um, how, you know, uh, the recording for White, White Christmas came together. And um, we, you know, I'm hoping we can actually play that. We're going to have that, um, you know, audio uh, added to the end of this. Well, so just a little wonderful. bit about that experience. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be creative right now in this pandemic. It's very, very difficult to keep things in the ways that we're used to them being, you know, we're used to singing together in a concert. You know, we're used to going to Manhattan to sing in all different places, going to hospitals, going to just different venues, and that's not happening right now. So I, I thought, what can we do to, to unify? What can we do to spread this community of, of music and of joy? How can I, can I get everyone together? And I don't know if, Lindy, I don't know if you used White Christmas every year. I don't remember singing it with you. I, I can't, I just don't, but for, correct me if I'm wrong. But for some reason, I started using White Christmas the first year I, I, I came to Sayasset as my final song of the winter concert, because it was always a little mm -hmm. bit before the holiday. And, and I just did it every year. So it became kind of like the winter alumni song. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Did you do that? I'm not sure. I have a winter alumni song, but I sang it many times. Oh, okay, okay. And so, so it's probably when, when you ask me, you usually, send me names of, of songs, titles, and say, does this make a good program? Would this be a good thing for us to do? And yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful song. It's easy, and it rings well, and it's, it's sentimental, and it's uh, traditional. It's good. Well, all so all of the, the, the women that I've worked with for 21 years knew, knew it. They all knew it, or at one point they knew it. <laughs> so um, I figured, you know what, what, wouldn't, what would be better? you know, what could be better than this alumni song sung by all of the alumni? So I took every, and I was, I'm a little bit anal and organized. So I went in my folder <laughs> and I took out every program I have, which I saved from 2001 until now. And I went on Facebook and I tried to friend every single lady <laughs> on those lists um, in order to spread the word. Now, I couldn't really, I, I couldn't find all of the programs from beforehand. I did find quite a few because Lindy had them there. So everybody I could reach out to, I tried via Facebook. And, um, and anybody else that I had their emails, I went through both of my emails from school and from home and I just emailed them personally. And then I went through my phone and I texted every single person that I had. And then I was lucky because one of the other teachers that I work with, Stephanie Kopeis, was in the group, so she knew people. So out she's to our here, yeah. And, and and this sort of, you know, um, it was like a domino effect that everyone was talking I to I reached someone. out and this one reached out. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I was able to get the word out, which was great. And everyone was able to get the information, however they were, via Facebook or an email um, or something being forwarded to them. And what I decided to do was, originally I decided I, I made a PDF of the music, I rewrote it so it was nice and, and easy to see. And then I made tracks for everyone to listen to their part. Um, and then I had like a click track going. And it was very soon that I realized that wasn't going to work because this song is not about, um, you know, sticking to tempo. This is a song that really requires you to feel, um, you know, phrase by phrase in more of a rubato situation. So um, I was in rehearsal. I just said, you know what, girls, I'm going to record this. I'm going to conduct it. You're going to sing it. And this is going to be the listening track. And it was that simple. I don't know why I thought of it then. I just did. And I posted that. And then I, I asked everyone to send me an audio. And then after the audio was mixed, I asked everyone to make me a video. And this was perhaps the most special part because some of the videos, um, they included their um, families. I had a lot of um, ladies, you know, holding their babies or singing with their kids or two sisters singing together that were both in the group at different times. It was super special to see that. And, and the whole video that 
was finally released was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I did have help with that. Um, a good, good friend, her name is Nikki Brenner. She has a business. She does this. She's incredibly talented. She mixed all of the audio, over a hundred audios. She mixed that down to, um, to get the final mix for the audio. And then she was able to organize all of the videos and she grouped them by, I don't know if you caught that when you saw the video, she grouped them by, by year. Yeah, yeah. So it was like oldest to newest. And then we added some pictures that I asked people on Facebook to provide. So I got a lot of really cool vintage photos um, from way back. And I thought that was really, really neat. Mm -hmm. And um, I shared this project with the Barbershop Harmony Society. Lindy suggested I do that. And they loved it. And they posted it on their Facebook. So um, I great. thought that was kind of exciting because they said this is exactly what we want because we want to know what the youth of America is doing. We want to see this. This is exactly, you know, what we hope for barbershop music. So it was exciting that they, they really liked that and, and, they, and they shared that with, with everyone. So that was cool. It was such a rewarding experience. I, I mean, it was like, it brought people together. Everyone on Facebook was talking about what are they gonna wear? Some people bought like barbershop shirts that they, you know, try to recreate their costumes from days gone past. You know, it was just really fun. So, um, so thank you so much for doing that and for including all the alumni. And it was, it was really special. So that was really cool. And sure like enough. I said, we're gonna include the audio. Yeah. A question for you. You were gonna share some of your memories as an adult. Oh yeah, I mean, some of my memories, I mean, of course we talked about like the, the trips we did to Disney, the one um, where we would go and visit your Ramapo chorus, I remember. Um, and that was really special. Just getting to see you and your element with them was always a real treat. And I remember going to like rehearsals and um, just, and also performances. So um, that was something very special to me. Um, we went up to the Concord. And I think it was part of the same, you know, like we would do a workshop where we would kind of um, sing and then also teach. And I remember mm -hmm. I have a video I was just watching that my dad took where you handed out like the different parts and made the audience participate. And I, I was just curious like what that was from, like those sort of trips, was that like um, an all state thing? Or it, was, it was New York State uh, School, NISMA. Um, it's their uh, winter conference. It's now in Rochester, but it was at the Concord Hotel for, for years and years yeah. until they finally tore it down. Um, <laughs> and it was uh, the once a year thing where it was an unbelievable honor to be selected. The teachers have to fill out these forms and send in tapes. And then you're lucky if you, if you ever get asked to, to be part of that. So Kristen has been there performing for the, for, she's mentioned that. And we have done it several times. And so that's what you were part of. And that was my, my wanting to make barbershop uh, like a, a chicken in every, every pot. Yeah. It's a, there, there's where I got my chickens. I mean, my teachers were there and I wanted to introduce them and to show them that good singing is good singing. They had a, because back to the music man thing that I was starting to mention, that was a certain quality of singing and people sort of typed it and said, oh, that's barbershop. We know what that is, but that's not real good singing. And what we want to show them is that good singing is good singing and you can sing good barbershop. It has to be good in order for it to be good barbershop. And that was my, my, my mission is to, through you, to show them how wonderful barbershop can be. So, <laughs> Yeah. Right back at you. I, this has been really so so incredibly special to um, to have this conversation and to just sort of like make this connection from you know all our memories to what you're currently doing and um, and thank you for you know keeping the Adelet spirit going. It's just really exciting and I can't wait, especially when this is over. I mean, like to to do more collaborative things as well. I mean, the library, you know. I remember singing at the library. I don't know if it was through Adelettes or, you know, but various things back in the day. But um, yeah, we'd love to continue that um, once we can all be together in person as well. well I'm going to give you a little, maybe, maybe, but you know, uh, we have done our own, what do you call it when Hollywood squares things? Um, we've done uh, True Colors um, and we've done I've Got a Crush on You, just the chorus where you see everybody, um, you know, doing it. And so Kristen and I are thinking that maybe, just maybe, um, in the spring, 
the adolets and my chorus here will learn um, the same song and we will put that out and that'll be a, a real coming together of the youth and the not so young. Yes, yes, that's the plan. That's our next project. So sneak peek. Mm -hmm. That's a great yeah. idea. Wonderful. And this has been Sharon with the Syatsat Libraries podcast, Turn the Page, with my special guest today. We hope today, you enjoyed this all and Lindy episode Bordney, of Turn and the, we're the Page going to podcast. End this chapter. Please stay tuned to hear the full recording of White Christmas by the Syatsat Adelettes alumni and more samples of the Adelettes singing those sweet barbershop chords. Thank you again to Ms. Lindy Bortney and Ms. Kristen Howell for spreading the joy of music through the legacy of the Syatsat Adelettes. Oh,